ask people first to please put in their names into the chat, their names and where, are, where they are from. Is that okay? Of course. Great. Everyone kindly do that. We would like to know uh, how many countries we're covering with this webinar. And I know that the number of participants will increase as we go. And I'd like to welcome everyone. The subject is interesting, but also our speaker is even more interesting. Uh, I would like to first set the rules of what this session, uh, how it was going to be handled. And then I'll give the mic to our speaker after I introduce her. Like always, uh, this session will be recorded. It will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So anyone who wants to refer back to any of its details can do that. We will be sending you the presentation as always also. And uh, this session would be more interactive than our usual sessions. And there will be more questions and answers. I think that we will be having two sessions for that. Um, so again, like always, if you'd like to put in your question in the chat, we will deal with it and, and address it when the time comes. And um, if you'd like to ask your question verbally, just raise the hand, please. Click on the raise the hand, and we will go through everyone who's, who has his hand risen so that we cover all the questions. OK? And, and like I said, it is an interesting subject, but we have even a more interesting speaker. Uh, and I'd like to introduce her. She is Joyce Joya. She's a thought-provoking keynote speaker management consultant and celebrity futurist who has enjoyed several successful careers and most recently has appeared over 70 times on local and national television in the US, New Zealand and Ghana. She also delivered her first TED talk in New Zealand in 2018 and I believe she had many more since then. Joyce has spoken in 30 countries, 47 of the United States, on seven continents and on seven seas and now we'll know why. Last fall, she was clinical professor for leadership and innovation for Semester at Sea. And that is a course that is delivered on a cruise. And I believe it is sponsored by the Colorado State University in the US. Her Herman Trend Alert is read weekly by 29,000 people. And I would love for you, Joyce, to also contribute to our CMC today, which is our uh, monthly newsletter. and that would enrich it, I know it for a fact. Also, uh, it is read by 29,000 people in 90 countries and in three languages. So the spread is really high. In 2013, Joyce was named USA Today's First Road Warrior of the Year. And that is um, an award that is given to a person who spends more than 100 days traveling. So we can tell how much travel Joyce does. She provides a unique combination of high tech and high touch. Joyce has several clients like Honda, BP, Procter & Gamble, SAP, and MasterCard. She's often quoted in media, including Industry Week, Time, Entrepreneur, and Forbes. But also, Joyce has a new book that is called Experience Rules, How Positive Experiences Will Drive Profit into the Future. Joyce has written six books in total, earned the three masters, and survived raising three daughters. And bless you for that. Join me in welcoming Joyce, whose topic of today is creating success for you and for your numbers in Normal 2.0. Joyce, the floor is yours, my dear. And I hope I did justice to all the knowledge that you'll be bringing into the session. Please go ahead. Many people talk about the fact that we are going back to something. We are going back to what they call the new normal. However, I believe that we are in fact going forward. We are going forward into what I call normal 2.0. That is actually a picture of what I looked like Yes, oh, close yesterday, but also after I had had my hair done one day at the hairdresser. In normal 2.0, no one may, uh, may stay under a dryer in the salon 
because that way, if it's a small one, you cannot be socially, uh, socially distant, actually physically distant is a term I prefer. So I believe that in fact, we, we are looking at an evolution of normal and I call it normal 2.0 because we're not going back to something, we're going forward. And in fact, I believe that once we are done with this pandemic, and admittedly, it's not going to be soon, we will be in what I call normal 3.0. And last Friday night at one in the morning, I gave a presentation in Manila, yes, in the Philippines, and I talked about what the post-pandemic future will be like in normal 3.0, because it will be different. Now, before I get into the real good stuff of the presentation, I wanna give you a disclaimer. And that is that many of you will know much of what I'm going to be talking about. The, the material that I'm going to be talking about is perhaps something that you've been doing for years. If that's true, please consider what I'm saying as a reinforcement that you've been doing things well, not as a criticism in any way uh, that uh, this presentation should have covered something else. And please understand my goal here is that you will take one or two or three or maybe four things away from what I talk about, because I am going to be talking about things that most associations are not doing. What I didn't include in my introduction is that I have been an association leader for many years, not only in IMC, but in the National Speakers Association and the Association of Professional Futurists. And much of what I'm going to bring to the table today will be from APF, that Association of Professional Futurists. So on your handout, if you printed one out, there is an action planning sheet. If you didn't print one out, I would urge you to take out a piece of paper and write down numbers at least one through five and at the top, what, by when, and who. And as I go through this presentation, uh, there may be things, I hope that there will be, that you would like to write down and perhaps do things differently in the future because you have a unique opportunity. Either three months from now, six months from now, this learning experience could be a pleasant memory, or you could actually use this information to change the way you operate as an IMC. Let's talk about what is success to you, because success is different for different leaders. So does success to you mean more members or is it higher attendance at events or is it members engaged at a higher level or is it more money to your bottom line or perhaps it's all of the above. What I know from my research in doing in creating my book, Experience Rules, is that if you want to be successful, no matter what business you're in, it starts with experience. That's why I named the book Experience Rules. So what kinds of experiences are you delivering to your members now? Do they feel highly engaged with you? Are you onboarding your new members? And what is that onboarding process like? Are you facilitating important networking? Because our research shows, and I'm sure your past research shows, 
that one of the main reasons that people join an IMC is to network with others who can bring them business. And if you are facilitating that, that raises your level of appreciation from your members. Of course, you're probably providing professional development to your members, but are you providing a different kind of professional development to your volunteers? Some years ago, I did a, a I think it was a half a day for the IEEE in Charlotte, North Carolina. And what I did for them, it was for their leaders. And I taught leadership, volunteer leadership to their volunteers. It really helped them to draw in more volunteers and to engage those volunteers at a higher level. But my suggestion doesn't stop there. What about if you provided professional development to your clients? Back in the late 70s, I was blessed to have been the publisher of a magazine called The Complete Buyer's Guide to Stereo Hi-Fi Equipment. And what I discovered was that I became more valuable to my clients, my advertisers, if I could help them do their jobs. And what I mean by that is, as the publisher of that magazine, I showed up with a stack of pre-publication reprints of reviews that I would issue six months later when the production models that were on the consumer electronics show floor were then in distribution to their members. And therefore, their members could use that stack of reprints to help sell their customers on the idea of buying my client's equipment. I was able to double advertising revenues five years in a row simply by looking at how I could be more valuable to my customers. Is there a way that you could be more valuable to your members by offering professional development for their clients as well. Now, questions. Uh, do we have any questions yet, Rima? And we forgot to say, please put your questions in the chat box. And Kusama, is there a way, wait a minute, maybe I can do this. Yes, okay. no. Let me see, that's what I wanted. Okay, so this is exactly what I wanted. Do we have any questions yet? Not yet, but I'm trying to see if anyone has their hand risen. And or, any... or you can raise your hand. If you raise your hand, we will unmute you and you can ask that question in person. None so far. Not yes. yet, okay. Not yet. So let's okay. keep going. They need more meat. Yes. <laughs> so what I'm going to give you are some truly out of the box ideas. That is a picture of Miss Kitty. She's not called Miss Kitty because she's a cat. She's called Miss Kitty because her friends are uh, other uh, characters who were in a Western series called Gunsmoke here in the United States. And my husband was a fan. And her, her friends were a family of foxes. Uh, and uh, she was the only cat. And Miss Kitty was pretty much the only female. And so we decided that we would call her Miss Kitty. And the other folks had names like Chester and Doc and, uh, and other names like that. So Miss Kitty, who was very wary of my taking this picture, obviously, was outside of the box, and, and she loves boxes, by the way. So before she could jump into the box, I took that picture. Are you doing world-class onboarding with your members? 
Are you doing new member meetups? And new member meetups are an opportunity to reinforce the benefits of your uh, of membership in your IMC. Do you talk about the opportunities that you have for volunteer engagement? We in our new member meetups have not been doing that, but we're going to be starting to do that for the APF, the Association of Professional Futurists. And I believe that that's going to help us a lot. I wanna talk about something now that comes from my book, Experience Rules. And actually, the source in the corner down here is not exactly accurate because what I did was I adapted this concept from the employee orientation that I offer in the book. So here goes. I hope this is something that will that is uh, new and exciting to you. So in orientation, your new member meetup, you might want to start with an introduction and reinforcing the sale, reinforcing why they joined, talk about the benefits, talk about the networking, talk about all of the different advantages that people get because they belong to your IMC. Then you want to tour your institute, tell them about all of the different things that you do, tour your website, show them how there's a place for press releases on your website. And if there's not, there ought to be. Show them how on your website, you're offering news of the industry. And if there's not, there should be. And if you want a good role model for it, you can go to apf.org and see what I'm talking about. Sadly, it's still on the Your Membership platform, but I'm doing my best to see what I can do about that. Communicate the significance of each member's contribution. When the Herman Group, which is my organization, did its research to look at what was the most important thing to employees, it turned out that it was how what they did contributed to the bottom line of that organization. Consider how the contribution of each member has a significance beyond just their dues, please, to the bottom line of the organization. Look for other professional development, uh, sorry, offer professional development within the orientation even if it's just teaching them a new icebreaker, even if it's just teaching them something very short. In the APF, we used to have something once a month that we called little bigs. And in our little bigs, we had members come and give 15 minutes of their leading edge material that they could share with other members. Consider how you could offer professional development perhaps from one of your members that would be most valuable to your new members. Present people who have been there. Have guest appearances from some of your members who started out as newbie consultants, that is new and fledgling uh, inexperienced consultants. And because of what they learned through their professional development in your IMC, they are now extremely successful and doing a, a great job for their clients. And, and that's a, a tremendous opportunity because people will see themselves in other people's stories. You might want to consider assigning buddies, mentors, and sponsors. What is the difference between those, those three groups? A buddy is a peer, someone who is on the same level as that individual. A sponsor is someone 
who is not on the same level, perhaps uh, more experienced, but not yet to the point where they might be considered a mentor. And I think that we all know what mentorship means. Uh, recently, I have taken on the mentorship of someone who graduated uh, from my high school who's having a difficult time finding a position. And that for me is very satisfying because he's got three master's degrees like I do and everybody's telling him he's overqualified. And uh, semi-finally, you want to have at least an appearance if they're not delivering it by one of your IMC leaders. And finally, you wanna gift them with something tangible. Give them a gift of something tangible. It does not have to be something that costs a lot. In fact, this is what we are using, if you can see it. It's just a little label. And if I weren't using my laptop to deliver this presentation, I would show you how I have an APF label on the other side of my laptop to help me identify it and also so that no one will steal it when it goes through security. Now, next, I'd like to share with you something that I think is really remarkable. It is something from IBM. Sadly, it's no longer on YouTube. It's been taken down because IBM is no longer doing this. IBM used to onboard their new people from all over the world in a, a virtual universe called Second Life, which you will see in this video. I hope you enjoy it. IBM is experimenting with the next generation of internet technology to enable richer collaboration and learning for individuals, teams, and communities in a multicultural, multi-time zone world. In this demonstration, the virtual environment, Second Life, is used to onboard new employees. The new employees are physically located in India, China, Europe, and the United States. But the Second Life environment brings them together in one place to learn, collaborate, and become a team. The new employees arrive at IBM's virtual onboarding center and are greeted by an HR advisor who is physically located in Europe. They go inside the orientation center and sit down in the conference room to start the session. The session includes presentations and discussions that facilitate common understanding of IBM's strategy and values. Participants can ask questions using voice or chat. The Second Life figures are unique to each individual and are designed to provide a physical context that can facilitate cross-cultural group discussion. During the first presentation, a new employee asks about how IBM works as a global team. She is told that global integration is core to IBM's strategy and that employees from multiple countries routinely work together to develop client solutions. The new hires then move to a different discussion area to learn about IBM's core values. These values are dedication to every client's success, innovation that matters for our company and the world, trust and personal responsibility in all relationships. They learn that in a global company with many different cultures, these common values provide the global glue that binds us together. The new employees then teleport to another location in Second Life for the next step in their orientation. In this session, the new employees receive detailed information on IBM's benefits. The information is provided by a benefits advisor who is physically located in South America. Once again, multiple collaboration tools are used so participants can view the presentation material ask questions, and interact collaboratively with the advisor. Employees receive benefits based on the country where they physically live. The new hires now move to kiosks in Second Life, where they learn about the specific benefits that apply to them. 
After the participants have time to review their benefits, they move to a more social setting. The Second Life Lounge is designed to facilitate informal collaboration, build rapport, and develop social networks. The new employees talk about where they are from, their hobbies, and work interests. The Second Life Lounge helps employees make the personal connections that will enable team communication and collaboration in the future. At the end of the day, the new employees move back to the presentation room to receive their new IBM shirts and gather their orientation materials. The group then walks out to say goodbye and leave Second Life to return to their physical work world and their new roles. Globalization has caused IBM to look for new ways to integrate processes and operations and build more effective global teams. Second Life and other advanced technologies offer the opportunity to help organizations bridge cultural differences, extend social networks, and collaborate effectively. Whoops. All right. There we go. So how was that for you? Uh, would you please uh, put something in the chat? And Rima, you're going to have to share it with me. Uh, what, uh, what's going on. How was that? Uh, did that give you some thought provoking ideas? Did that give you ideas about things that you might want to consider putting into your new member meetup or your new member orientation? So it's actually Joyce, one note in, in, in the chat. Yes. Uh, it's a note as well as a question. Sure. And I'm going to read it. Um, and it's from Soren Kayan, who is actually the immediate past chair of ICMCR. In, in Romania, Romania, correct? Romania, correct. Yes. Um, the note and the question are as follows. The, quali the quality of the activity of any professional organization, either IMC or ICMCI, is very much dependent on the participation and the involvement of their members. The question is, when is the right moment to press on that to the new members, because thinking that during the onboarding, maybe it's a bit too early. And also he's giving a note saying that giving them a gift as a tangible item to walk away with as part of the induction is an idea that he loves. Soren, I'm happy that you like that idea. And uh, it uh, another one, as long as you were, we are talking about it is, I'm not sure whether you can see this lapel pin. Can you see it? This is APF's lapel pin. I'm wearing my CMC though, <laughs> for obvious reasons today. Uh, thank you so much. So for the question, the, I don't believe that it's ever too early. In fact, when I am talking with people who are prospective new members, I may even tease a little bit about what volunteer opportunities there might be because they would be rubbing elbows, that's an American expression, they would be networking in order to get something done with their, uh, with their much more experienced counterparts. And sometimes those experienced counterparts are very well-known names in our association. So thanks for the question. If, if you have any follow-up to that, we, I'll be happy to address it uh, in our next question time. A couple of weekends ago, I had the privilege of attending U IMC USA's ConsultCon. And one of the speakers there was a guy named Steve Pemberton. Steve Pemberton is fairly famous in, uh, in uh, actually movie circles in the United States because there was a film that was made about his life called A Chance in the World. And he had a very, very difficult childhood. Uh, as a foster child growing up, uh, sent from one foster home to another foster home to another foster home. And when he finally got into one where he stayed, that the, his foster father 
took it upon himself to make Steve's life truly miserable. So he had a very rough childhood. But beyond that, he talked about the power of recognition. That was the title of his presentation, the power of recognition. And within that presentation, he talked about the power of gratitude and how gratitude work can work with recognition in a very powerful way. As you know, I write the Herman Trend Alert that goes out to people in 90 countries every week. And I decided that I would do a Herman Trend Alert on doing recognition right in normal 2.0, because I believe that the material that work human Steve's company has researched is so powerful that I wanted to tell all of my readers about it. And so I wrote from the point of view of employee and employer doing recognition right in normal 2.0. And then last week, as I was preparing for this presentation, all of a sudden it, it hit me that if, if giving and receiving gratitude is powerful, then why not apply that to associations? Interesting out of the box idea, I think. So allow members to recognize members. In fact, I'm going to recognize right now one of my members and the people who has supported me. And she happens to be in the audience. And Patricia Gaffney, I would not have been able to earn the FIMC designation if it were not for Patricia Gaffney's support. And I acknowledged her in, in my thank you speech when I accepted the award, but I think that there's no such thing as too much appreciation. So from the bottom of my heart, again, Patricia, thank you. It makes me feel good to be able to recognize and appreciate the uh, publicly the value that someone else has brought to my life. So what I'm suggesting is, thank you, Greg Brooks, that it be perhaps a video appreciation and that you create a YouTube channel for your IMC where members may put up testimonials and thank you videos for other members. Video is one of those things that's really very popular in part because we're so isolated from one another in this, in this Zoom environment, but also because it has sight, sound, and motion, kind of like movies. And we all, almost all of us, love movies. So what I'm suggesting is that this video appreciation finds a way to reward givers and receivers. Now, quickly, I want to tell you about a company that I do business with here in the U.S. And there may be companies in Europe or South America or Asia that are also putting together meal kits for people who are in lockdown and, and COVID challenged. And every week, a box of food arrives at my door. And the box is divided into bags. And each bag is a kit that allows me to make a very special vegan meal. Well, this wonderful company, purplecarrot.com, when they have had issues, and they have had some major issues with UPS ground, uh, not UPS ground, sorry, FedEx ground, getting orders to people in a timely manner, uh, has issues, they will offer a refund. 
uh, for my Thanksgiving box that was not supposed to arrive until Friday, they offered to give me a full refund. A couple of weeks ago, when my box didn't arrive until Friday and some of the food was spoiled, they gave me a full refund. Was I able to make most of the meals? Yes. Was I able to run to the store and put back in the things that had spoiled? You bet. And did it cost anywhere near the $100 or so that it cost me for the three meals? No, not at all. So uh, it, it was a, a reward to me. But here's a really interesting thing that they do. You go on their website, and of course, they ask you to, to grade the customer service, the level of customer service that you got. And let me tell you, these people are extremely well-trained, extremely well-trained. If I read you some of their responses, you would be quite surprised that this is customer service from, a, from any online organization. Well, they take it a step further. Not only do you get to write something about the individual and give them one, two, three, four, or five stars, but you also get to reward them with either a cup of coffee, a free lunch, or a gift card. I just think that is phenomenal. It's brilliant. And that's why when I talked about doing recognition right in normal 2.0, I included something, a whole paragraph about purple carrot. And what can we learn from that? Is there a way to reward people for showing appreciation? I don't know. Something to think about and something to perhaps brainstorm about. So member engagement. Recently, the APF conducted its own member engagement survey. Now, it was Lao Tzu, one of my favorite philosophers, who said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. If you don't know who your members are, how can you possibly serve them at the optimal level? So I'm suggesting that you, like APF, conduct a membership survey. You can find out what they most value, which, by the way, is the key to understanding how to engage and retain them. How they want to engage with you, list all of your volunteer opportunities, what events they attend so that you'll know. And, and by the way, I was blindsided by the results of the answers to that particular question. Because my favorite activities, and not surprising, it's ex the experiential learning ones, are not the same ones that are the favorites of others. So I thought that that was really interesting. What they want in terms of professional development so that you can tailor what you're doing to what people are really looking for. And you can do much more. By the way, the president of, president CEO of Aperio Insights, who did our little 23 question survey for us, said yesterday on the telephone that he would be happy to talk with you about your survey at no charge, like updating your previous survey and, uh, and there would be no charge for that. So uh, if you are interested in getting connected with Michael Courtney, please drop me an email and you will get my email address in just a moment on one of the final slides. So let's look again at member engagement. What kinds of volunteer opportunities do you have? People support what they help to create. Take your board members and have them create subcommittees and engage your members. The more members you bring into subcommittees, the more highly engaged. Case in point, one of the subcommittees that I am a co-chair for, for IMC USA, is the Student Management Consulting uh, Awards. 
which is something that I dreamed up to help bring new members, younger members, student members into our IMC. And my co-chair invited this person that he has been networking with to join us on our subcommittee. But I said, one of the stipulations was one of the requirements was that that person needed to be a member of IMC USA. Well, guess what? In fact, he wasn't. And so he joined so that he could engage with us on this subcommittee. Very cool, I thought. And I was pleased that it all worked out that way. You can do member spotlights. A member spotlight is uh, a an interview that you might do with one of your members who's just done something special. Maybe that person won an award. Maybe that person uh, just uh, did some research or wrote a book or something like that. And your member spotlights could be like once a month. And it's a way of engaging your uh, members and promoting what they do, which is always very popular with members. And of course, creation of your IMC appreciation YouTube channel and other ideas for innovative networking. If you have any other ideas for innovative networking, please put them into the chat right now because I'm gonna move on with time, our time constraint to revenue generation, because I don't wanna not be able to give everything to you today. So here are some out of the box ideas for revenue generation. You may be doing affiliate membership or associate membership, and maybe you're not, because some of the IMCs are not. We as an association of professional futurists did not have an associate membership. We had an organizational membership, but not an associate membership. For us, an associate membership member is someone who does some of the work we do, but does not consider themselves a professional futurist. The other way I would define that is someone who sells to your IMC members. And if they're willing to give you money to have access to your members, great for your bottom line, right? You could sell multiple year memberships. Now, what I mean by that is in the APF, we have three year, five year and lifetime memberships. Uh, I would say 15% of our members choose to sign up for three or five year memberships. I, I don't even know what it costs for a lifetime. I don't, I don't think that we're offering them anymore. Uh, but the three and five year, we are. And if your IMC is bottom line challenged right now, then you might want to consider pushing for three or five year memberships because there will be people when you're, it's time to renew who will choose to save a little bit of money, a few euros by signing up for three or five years. And that will give a really nice boost to your bottom line when you need it at this time. Then of course, comes the work to make sure that when you get to next year, the year after, and you're not having that income coming in, that you've created other revenue streams that will support the organization because that will not be coming in. You will already have gotten that revenue. Uh, we are, uh, I know that uh, CMC Global is into sponsorships and I'm guessing that the IMCs are as well. But one of the things that we are considering for the SMCA, the Student Management Consulting Awards, is selling naming rights. In other words, it would be, we would call it, these are two sponsors in the US, the Oracore Student Management Consulting Awards or the One Page Plan 
Student Management Consulting Awards. And of course, it would cost quite a bit of, of money to have those naming rights. But there are some sponsors for whom it is well worth it. Especially in our case, if they're going to be exposed to students. Now, I early in this presentation, I, I asked you please to take out your action planning sheet. And if you didn't have one, to please take out a piece of paper and write one through five on it, what by when. In other words, write down things that you would like to do as a result of some ideas that you might have seen today that you aren't already doing. And I'll give you a few moments to do that as I address your questions. This is actually my cell phone. And I am on WhatsApp. You can reach out to me. Just make sure that you uh, identify yourself with CMC Global. Or you can email me at Joyce at HermanGroup.com. That is my real email address. To sign up for the Herman Trend Alert mentioned in today's presentation, please visit www.hermantrendalert.com. If you're in Spain or some other Spanish-speaking country, I do have a translator for Spanish, and I'm looking for one for Portuguese right now. And if you're interested in translating the Trend Alert into other languages and using it as a promotion vehicle for either your IMC or your individual organization, uh, please contact me at Joyce at HermanGroup.com. And if you want to sign up for the Trend Alert and you don't want to, and, and you're sending me a, a, a note for something else, uh, please don't hesitate to ask me to sign you up for the Trend Alert. I'm happy to do so. Do we have any questions, Rima? We have notes, we have questions, and I'm going to go through them all now. Right. Um, there's a note from Constantinos, your colleague at IMC USA and the delegate at IMC USA, actually. He says, love the teleporting function. All IMCs can utilize such features. Thank you, Constantinos. Soren adds another note as well to his previous question, saying, I think that COVID brought a second life. I think that COVID brought us to, to a second life in a brutal but efficient way. And ah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Soren. <laughs> now I understand why you were you are the past chair. Next. Elizabeth says, great presentation. I like the ideas presented. The onboarding process should be a standard for all ICMCI organizations. Thank you. And, and yes, Thank you, Elizabeth. Actually, I agree. Yeah, and at ICMCI itself, we do that a lot in order to make sure that different IMCs actually understand the business of ICMCI as well. But Tricia acknowledges your gratitude and says, Joyce, you are too kind, also deserving of your recent recognition. Thank you, Patricia, I second that. Yohona Luca, who's a board member of ICMCI and uh, from IMC Kosovo, she says, thank you, Joyce. 60% of our yearly plan is mostly done based on our members and their requests. Then during the year, our members seem to be too busy to participate in our events and programs. Do members know what they need? That's a good question. What part of the program is based on the needs or the research and how much is based on what you think is best for the members? Wow, okay. I could... Uh, could you give me just a second? Because I'd like to address that. Uh, we could do a whole nother presentation on marketing your events, and perhaps we may. <laughs> but clearly, if you're not getting people coming to your event, then you're not delivering the value that they're looking for. You may be delivering value, but you're not possibly delivering the value that they're looking for, or you're not delivering it in the way that they're looking for it, 
let me give you an example. Recently, well, I guess I better start at the beginning. Last February, I spoke in Namibia at a conference of speakers. And at this conference of speakers, we put together uh, for the third day of the conference, something called an unconference. And I took that concept of an unconference and I brought it to the Association of Professional Futurists. I happen to serve as vice chair, at least temporarily. And we had multiple platforms in, we, we engaged members on multiple platforms simultaneously. We had at least one Zoom platform going. We had Shindig, which is another networking kind of platform going where people could make appointments with people and, and then meet in Shindig and then go off together and have their own private video chats. And we had Miro. So we had multiple Miro boards going for all of the different presentations. We had uh, a, a thread that went through all four days. And yes, we did four days. It, I, I don't know how we did it with the level of engagement that we did, but it worked. And we had uh, two of our members who are experts in the field of appreciative inquiry to, and we did like a session on each of those quadrants for each of the four days. We, so we had Miro boards going, we had Shindig going, we had Zoom rooms going, and it was probably the most successful event that we have ever done as an organization. And we have done online events every year, something called the Futures Festival. So I would urge you, look at what platforms you're using, the degree to which you, you're using breakout rooms, the opportunities for networking, which I, uh, I think sometimes are lacking on, in online events. And we also, as part of that unconference part of the Collaborate 2020, and that's what we called it, we had a, a, a people library. And I have seen that graphic behind someone in a Zoom room. But in our people library, we imported it into Miro and we were able to put little strips on the, the, uh, the sides of the book so that we had our name. And if you clicked on the book, it came up with how to reach us, either our email or our telephone number, or how to message us in, on one of the platforms, or how to message us on WhatsApp. Uh, how to reach us to, to take us out as a book and take us into Shindig and have that networking time with us. It was, it, it was really super. So uh, are there other questions that you have? More notes and questions. Uh, Patricia says the IBM video is time worn yet timeless, drills, drills down to essential elements on onboarding capture them to reapply, but customize them for every audience. An ICMCI skeleton group could be helpful for all. Let's work on one. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, thank you, Patricia. Um, Jalal from uh, our IMC in Turkey says, thank you, Joyce, for your ins inspiring insights. I just would like to add to the member approach, the stakeholder focus, including all the stakeholders, would give a lot input to consider in strategic planning and other activities of our organization. With key stakeholders, I mean, in addition to members, ICMCI, other IMCs, clients of our members, society, and partnerships. 
And that is something that you already addressed, especially with the onboarding part and, and, and the welcoming. Right, Joyce? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm crying tears of joy now because you have touched upon exactly what my book is about. My book is about engaging all the stakeholders in an organization, not just customers and employees. And I have even forecast that there will be a new person in the C-suite I call the CEXO, the Chief Experience Officer. And it will be that person's job to coordinate all of the messaging, branding, and advertising for all of the different stakeholder groups. So I could not be in greater uh, uh, agreement with you. And I think that you will really enjoy my book when it comes out in January. Thank you, Jilla. Um, Gerald Savin, your uh, colleague from IMCUSA, also says naming rights is an interesting idea to explore. Uh, Samuel says, very grateful, jo uh, Joyce. Thank you for the insights. Namrud, again, from Zimbabwe, says the same, that it's very inspiring. Insights on how we can grow our IMCs. And um, Jalal says again, Sorry, Joyce, I'm afraid I missed your earlier message as I joined a bit late. No, Jalal, do not apologize. Uh, she addressed it, but actually you hit the nail on the head. You just said it in the words that uh, Joyce uh, just appreciated a lot. Um, I have a follow-up question as ICMCI to, to the answer you gave to Yahoo. Now, at many times, and we're running out of time, so I'll be short, at many times, Members do not even give you the opportunity to introduce properly what you have, other than not attending, other than not being active. Regardless of all of those and whatever you try, even the onboarding doesn't happen. So again, and it, it builds on Soren's question, when do you start to have them actually get on board in a manner where you attract them, even if they're not interested in being interactive? Why have they joined your association? I mean, there has to be, uh, what, I'm, ICMCI? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, and they joined for the CMC, for the benefit of providing oh. the CMC to their members. And that, right. you feel that that is it, even though there is much, much more that they could benefit from, well, from being members I, with ICMCI, for example. I understand what you're saying. And I think that this is something because of the, the nature, the higher level of the, of the question that I cannot address in the few minutes that I have, and I don't want to keep people. So I'm happy to address that with you at some later time. But in the meantime, I want to keep going if I may. I'd like to end with a little inspiration. My, my daughter, my eldest daughter, uh, when I went, uh, she was a senior in college and I went into her dorm room and there were sheets of newsprint that were hanging from the walls and the cabinet and the doors and it, they seemed to be everywhere. And I said to her, what's going on, Belinda? Is this some sort of new wallpaper or something? And it was a page from their college newspaper. It was a poem that was sponsored by Apple and it was called Dream Big. And I took it and adapted it. And I end my presentation with this poem, which I, because I adapted it, now call Live Your Dream. If there were ever a time to dare to make a difference, to do something really worth doing, that time is now. Not for any grand cause necessarily, but for something that tugs at your heart, something that's your aspiration, something that's your dream. You owe it to yourself to make your days here count. Have fun, dig deep, 
stretch, dream big. Know, worth, know that things worth doing seldom come easily. There will be good days, and yes, there will probably be bad days. There will be times when you want to turn around, pack it up, and call it quits. But those times come only to remind you that you're pushing yourself and that you're not afraid to learn and grow. Persist, because with an idea, determination, and the right tools, you can do great things. Let your instincts, your intellect, and your heart guide you. Trust. Believe in the incredible power of the human mind, in the power of doing things that really make a difference, of working hard, of laughing and hoping, of reaching out and saying, I love you, of lasting friends, of all the things that will cross your path this year. The start of something new brings the hope of something great. Anything is possible. There's only one you and you will pass this particular way only once. Live your dream, make a difference. And now I'm going to leave you with just four lines. Give beyond reason, love without limit. Stretch yourself past what you thought was reality and dream to create your future. Well, I can't but say thank you. Um, you left us with a very beautiful poem and, and people are commenting that it's been a real inspiration. Um, thank you, Joyce, thank you for the time. Thank I want to teach the... one more thing. May, may I Tell share us. one more thing with all of you? Please. So recently I learned that a virtual hug e is either this or this. I, on the other hand, would like us to, to redefine a virtual hug. The redefinition I would like to see is this. Because I believe that in this time of isolation, we're not getting enough hugs. And the more that we can give and get hugs, the happier we're all going to be. Have a wonderful evening, morning, day, whatever it is in your time zone. And thank you so much for your attendance. Again, thank you, Joyce. And, and this is a hug to you, my dear. Lovely knowing you during the past few weeks. I mean, I already feel that you are a very close friend. Uh, you are a person that loves giving and you just give us lots of insights. People are writing the thank yous on the chat and, and we will download the chat and send it to you. Thank you. We will, we will stay in touch. I know that everyone will contact you. Maybe they weren't as uh, uh, interactive with, uh, with questions today. But okay, so here's an offer. Here's an I, offer that I mm -hmm. would like to make to the IMCs. Mm -hmm. If you would like me to come and speak at your in-person conferences once you start having them again, I will do that for expenses only if you will find me some other speaking engagement while I am there. And uh, this, this offer is worth like $10,000 that I'm making to you all today. So uh, I hope that some of you will take me up on it. As I travel around the world, I love to interface with new cultures, new people, meet new people, Find out how I can support people in their growth all over the world. I live to serve. And I will leave you with that message. I'll just say thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope that it has been as inspirational to you as it was to 
us at uh, having no choice is something that I value and I hope that you would be able to take her up on her offer. She's a person with many opportunities and, and I hope you'll take her up on that. Um, this session will be on YouTube. The presentation will be sent to you via email, uh, most probably by tomorrow. And if you have any follow-up questions to Joyce, you already know how to reach her. And we're all one big community. Let's continue to be so. Let's continue to be faithful to our giving natures. And let's all be one ICMCI. Thank you, Joyce. Bye-bye.